it's recording now. now. This fish was caught back in the early 80s. So we hold up pretty good. Now remember, the fish that I replaced the board with is about the same size. So I just used the same holes and the same screws and the same hangers to put him on there. But you need a little knife to countersink so the screw will lay flat against the wall. I like to use wood screws. If you got a great big one or a medium sized fish. And the secret is to use two sized drill bits. One great big one to make the hole so you can shave around it to countersink the screw. Then you sneak in with a smaller one to go through the back so to grab that masonite and you can tighten him down to it. And to make the dots, I like to use a nice heavy marker so you can see real well. Now our fish is mounted on the wall, but we still have to put a few details in him and varnish him up. And then he'll be done. Now remember, he has a hanger, a little swivel hanger you can purchase just about anywhere. Then you could put them on with real little screws. See how that goes? You could put that on driftwood, panels, or anything. And that, you could make sure you got a good nail to hang it on there and it'll hang. Let's get into finishing this boy up. Now, I need to darken him up. I got my paints right here. And I like to use a Japan dryer. And I use a very dark brown. <clears throat> and remember, I would use my base color again. So I use the base color and dark brown, and I mix that all up. Okay. <clears throat> and then we just wipe a lot of that off. And we can go right in to bring out his scales. Just dry brush them out. Raise the pattern, that's all you got to do. A little dark on them. One of your fingers there. Raise the pattern just a little bit. Just a little bit. Raise the pattern. Raise the pattern down the back a little bit. Going very light. Just raise that pattern a little bit. Just raising patterns up a little bit. I want too heavy. There might be a little bit. You don't want to get too ahead of yourself. Just take your time. I like to work fast though. Let me see how I'm just barely raising the scale pattern now. And I'm using the stuff that's in the tissue. That's how about how much I want to go. Just darken it out, just to bring the pattern out just a little bit.
Okay. Looking pretty good. Okay, we'll give it a bit of a Japan dryer. I remember our base color, we're always going to come back to it because we darkened it up. And then we'll just put some lines down his back. And a little dark around his, a little dark around his things there. Just to put an edge on it. A little touch here. And this fish should be ready to go. Now he is. Now he's ready to do his varnishing. Well, we might have moved around a little bit when we were putting the stripes on. But, uh, there he is. Without the gloss. Wait till you shine him up. He'll look like he just came out of the water. Because I put a secret recipe on there when you all wasn't looking. Here's a fish. Now we're going to varnish him. That's the final step. And we're going to take care of the back a little bit too. But there he is. I think he's beautiful without any shine. But fish have its natural slime on. And this, of course, doesn't. That's what we're going to do right now. Little varnish right here. First, I like to start with the back. Just put a varnish in there. See, it's kind of thick. Maybe too thick. Might have to thin it up with the tip of Go around the eyes. It's self leveling. It means gravity will help pull it out flat. In the head, always start at the head. You never get in trouble. You always know right where you're at. Oh, poor look. See, it self levels out. I'll get a couple drops. Remember, use your fingers. Okay. Stop the head. Now I'm going to get on his eye. Now to kind of fill that in. Real nice. Some good stuff. You could buy this at any craft store. Just don't get it in the wood department. Because after a while it'll turn it yellow as a banana. We're still working on the head. So we'll go down these gills and make sure it's nice and level. And right here around his eye, you want to make sure you put a lot of because that'll sink down in there and really make it look good. And always use a little spit if you need to. That's all you got to do. Look how slick and pretty that is. Make sure you get it on top real good. Next, the fence. We'll start from the top. Remember, like I always said a hundred times. Put a nice thick layer on there that will really protect it. There's that one. There's that one. Now we get a tail. Well, this is pretty thick. I might have to put one coat on. It's up to your own discretion. I might have to put two on it, but right now it's looking pretty good. We're just going to have to get it laid out there first. Walt well, and Jennings, that's my cat. He thinks we're having fish for lunch. He saw this big fish and he goes, oh boy, does that cat loves eating fish, boys. Mm -mm -mm. He is like a fish eating Tom. Okay. 
Keep your hands up out of the mess so it won't get sticky. Let the bristles do the work. Okay. That, my friends, is about it. Okay. Now, he's varnished. There's a little bit around his head. Now, I'm going to take him in and put him under the fan in there and uh, let him dry. Now he's, uh, I got a fan in the back and he's on the fan. And I got a high crank. That's the, the air moving over the fish will harden that gloss up. Always trust your colors that you use because once you put that gloss on there, It'll change it completely. It's like waxing your car. You put that wax all over it, it's all waxy. And then when you buff it out, it's completely different. But here's all my color mixtures that I had from uh, last night. As you see, I put them in plastic to preserve them for today. While my fish is in there, I still got my colors that I used last night. And he's on the fan, and he's on the fan now. And when he dries real good, and he's a little tacky, I go in and check him. And then if I need a little bit to touch him up a little bit, I got my brush, my touch-up brush. And that's a good trick. Okay, he's still tacky a little bit. You know, spit. Go over him. But mainly, just got to touch up the back a little bit. Okay, we get a turpentine. And mix a little, little back blend here. A little dark. I want it too heavy. Okay. Up. Look down the back. And that is about it. <laughs> well, there he is. All varnished. And now I'm going to go put him back on the fan for a little while. And uh, he should be dry by this evening. I like to let them set overnight. Then that'll be sure there won't be no runs or anything. But uh, you just witnessed him mounted from uh, a frozen entity to uh, a mounted trophy. Always trust the colors you put on it. When you mix your colors, you, even if they don't look right before you gloss him, don't mess with them. This is a one-shot operation. The better you get at it, the better it'll look. Now I'm going to use gravity to make sure that all the gloss settles right where I want it. Beautiful job. Pat myself on the back. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. This is Stephen Steve. Saying I believe you always will win in the end. Thank you.